everybody, hello, 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 welcome to Premier Shortcuts, type, um, yes, in the comments, type, a yes, type, a yes, we are in tonight with no other than the legend, the myth, the man, our director, Uma, in the house with me tonight, how's everyone doing, welcome to day number seven, the final, the final day of the seven day training program, we are so excited to be here tonight, hello, how's everyone feeling, how's everyone feeling, motivational session, inspirational, Uma and I are here to relax your nerves, to motivate you, to give you that energy. It is all good. And to go through some of the most important things you want to focus on a few days before the exam. So how is everyone doing? Type a word on how you feel. Type a word where you're dialing in from tonight. Type something to Uma and I. Hello, Uma. How are you doing, boss? I'm good, Marvin. How's everyone doing? How is everyone feeling ahead of this exam? If you are excited as I am because you guys have worked really hard all year and you're going to smash it on Tuesday, just type a yes. If you guys are up for this, you're going to smash yes. it. Yes. Yes. Mancho, doing okay. Now that we can see you. <laughs> you're hilarious. I think it's more of like you're going to be scarred for life seeing us on a Sunday night, boy, if you feel that it's helping. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, wow. Ah, it's great to have all of you. Great to have all of you guys. So, um, how's everyone feeling? So, I've got um, almost some people said they're stressed. Gas up because of you guys. Nicole is feeling gas. Fantastic. Ben Chod is nervous. Hotshot is worried. Ali is scared. Great doing. So, let's see what we've got. We've got Manjo. Manjo is doing okay. Now, we can see you guys. So, nice one, Manjo. How you doing, Manjo, in the house? <laughs> Temi is from London. How are you, Temi? Gabby, really stressed, could barely revise today. Kiran is excited. Tini feels very, very lost. Wow. Uh, Majo was so nervous five minutes ago, guys. That's why we're here. So if you feel nervous, if you're feeling stressed, this is normal, okay? Every single person, doesn't matter who it is, we've done the exam. Omar has done the exam. Georgina had this exam. But even though they we all did so well, we're very, very nervous all the way to the exam, right? So you always have a level of anxiety, always have a level of nervousness, nothing wrong with that, okay? Because you can use that for good. But um, the main thing is we don't want this stress and this anxiety to overtake you where you're not able to perform outstanding in the exam. And that's why Uma and I, we've arranged today's session, the last session, which will focus entirely, entirely, entirely on your mindset. It's the final part. You've done all this hard work, combo course, clinical, calculations, MEP, OTC. You don't want to go into the exam and literally go blank. So that's what today's session is about, is to help you so that once you walk into that exam, you feel confident, you feel good, you're in a very good place, you're able to remember everything you've studied so that you will perform outstandingly on the day. So great stuff, people. How many of you are ready for a short time tonight? Type of me, type of me, type of me. We've got amazing stuff as always planned for you tonight. Great, great content for you. Type of me if you are ready to begin. Let's go, guys. Very important things. No one talks about this, but this is the most important things for you. So um, let's focus on the main thing is on Tuesday, which is a few, few hours from now. <laughs> On Tuesday, some of you might go into the exam, but remember, you don't have to sit the exam, okay? So the main thing Umana always tell you, only sit the exam when you feel ready. Please don't sit the exam if you don't feel ready. If you feel ill, you're not feeling well for any reason, please do not sit the exam. If you've got maybe some personal issues and things that you know 100% are going to affect your performance, if you've, uh, if you've applied for reasonable adjustment for more time and say the GPC hasn't granted that time and you believe this is going to affect your performance, please do not sit the exam. You are better withdrawing from this exam and taking some more time to prepare and come back feeling confident. You don't have to be 100% confident, but at the same time, you cannot go into the exam feeling like you're going to fail and knowing other things that you're going through or that are going to disadvantage you so that's the first advice we're going to give you guys so please remember please remember only sit the exam when you feel fit to sit that exam and you could walk into the exam on the day of the exam and you can literally withdraw from that exam if you walk in there you feel nervous you're throwing up you've got a headache anything that you think is going to affect your state of the exam 
please do not sit the exam. You have the right to withdraw from the exam. Obviously, before you actually sign anything. Okay, so that's the first thing I want to say to you. Only sit this exam when you feel ready. Bobby, how would I know that I'm ready for the exam in terms of preparation? You will know. <laughs> you will know because you've been doing questions, you've been reading, you've been doing some past papers, you've been getting involved in chats. So you will know when you feel ready. Okay, and again, as I said, it doesn't have to be 100%. But if you feel even 70% confident, then that's okay, right? That's okay because you're never going to feel 100%. So what do you need to have with you? Um... Be, um, before you leave for the test center. So the reason why we're focusing on this is because over the years, Uma and I, we've trained so many students and we've had very, very good trainees. They've done so much work and they've gone into the exam and on the day of the exam, everything has gone wrong for them. And as a result, they've either failed the exam or they've had to nullify the exam. So the reason why we're taking time to show you this is because we don't want this to happen to you too. Unfortunately, many students focus on revision and revision and revision, and they keep doing this all the way to the day of the exam, that they totally forget about all the things for the day itself of the exam. So that's what we're going to do today. So make sure you bring with you the important things that are required. So your GPC approved calculator. It has to be GPC approved, guys. Last year, I had someone call me on the day of the exam saying, oh, my God, I've got the wrong calculator in the exam. So make sure it's GPC approved. Make sure you have all your identification documents, your passport, driver's li license, provisional license, the photo ID that's recommended all from the GPC website. It's very hot today, right? And it's going to be hot next week. So a bottle of water, make sure that it's clear. There's nothing marked on the bottle and you can take that with you in the exam. So please make sure that your journey is planned. Definitely. At least the night before the exam. If you're traveling far, it may even be better to book a hotel so that you're down at the venue, right? You don't want to be stopped by traffic, motor works, and things like this, okay? You don't want anything that's going to affect your mental state on the day of the exam. So part one, um, you guys all know this. The exam is two hours um, for your calculations, 10 to 12, and then part two, 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. So you, most of you already know this, so we're not going to dwell too much on your exam times now but what you have here is it's important to know about the plan for the day so the GPH has put this up so part one you have to be there by nine o'clock ideally it's recommended you get the 30 minutes before this exam starts so i'll say properly by 8 30. okay so at nine o'clock you've got administration opens 9 30 assessment rooms open 9 50 you've got your pre-assessment announcements and then the exam starts at 10 o'clock so whatever happens you definitely have to be there before this exam starts. Once the exam starts, you have 15 minutes to be there. So after 10, 15, you cannot sit this exam anymore. So please guys, this is so important. We've had people that have not been able to write the exam because they got to the exam late. So you don't want that to happen to you, get there early. And then part one commences at 10. You could, 10, 15 is the last time anyone could arrive for the exam. After that, you cannot sit the exam anymore. Part one finishes at 12 o'clock, so it's two hours. Then you have your lunch break, guys. Make sure that during this time, you forget about paper one. Don't think about paper one, right? Don't think about those questions. Just start focusing on paper two. Because whatever you've done in paper one, it's done. And even if you worry about it, you cannot change anything. Okay, so you just have to go in there positive. You've done paper one, move on to paper two. Don't discuss the answers with anyone. Stay away from anyone that's talking about answers because this could affect your state on the day of the exam. So please stay away, stay away. So I just do that. That something just happened to my screen. Okay. So um, another thing as well is um, after lunch, you're gonna obviously have like an hour's lunch, and then after lunch, make sure you get there again on time. Um, you register at one o'clock. Assessment hall opens at one thirty, and then your assessments announcements again, which are very important. And then obviously part two starts at two o'clock. You need to be there latest two fifteen if you want to write that exam, and then it finishes at four thirty. Okay, so that's the plan for everyone. Everyone has this exam at the same time, finishing at the same time. Okay, so very, very important. Don't mess this up. So when should you get um, to the test center? It's important that you get there at least 30 minutes before the start time, right? So the center's open at 9 o'clock. You want to be there at 8.30, right? You want to be there by 8.30. Make sure you plan your journey ahead, as I mentioned. These are very little things, but I promise you on the day of the exam, many of you may have been focusing so much on your revision 
and even staying up all night that you totally forgot that you had to get your passport, you had to get your photo ID, you had to um, plan your route, you had to check where there's going to be traffic on your route on the day and all these things. Okay, so please arrive at least 15 to 30 minutes before the exam starts so that you are comfortable and you are not stressed. The most important thing on the day of the exam is going to be your state of mind. You cannot do a lot of revision anymore. It's not even advisable to start trying to study and learn new things on the day of the exam. What you want to do is protect your mind, protect your state. And one of the first ways you do that is by getting to your exam hall on time and making sure that there's nothing external that could affect your state of mind. So identifications, take the right identifications, valid passport, driver's license, provisional license, but whatever happens, make sure that this identification will be accepted, okay? Will be accepted so that everything should be fine, okay? It shouldn't be any problem at all. If you plan these things, make sure you are ready. They sound like very simple things, but I promise you that the little things that make students fail this exam, not the complex things, the little things. So um, items, you need to know the items that will be permitted on the day of the exam. There you, there you have all your calculators that are permitted. And I promise you, there will still be some students that will go into that exam without a calculator and realize, oh my God, I left it. Um, make sure that you have your permitted ID. You go through the permitted items list. I've got that later on. But um, you can, you're obviously going to be given pencils. You're going to be given the papers that you need. If you wanted extra paper, they're going to give you all of this stuff. So you don't really have to bring writing material. They're going to give that to you. Um, someone's asked a question. Um, what about for those that have extra time, they get less time for break? Um, those are, yeah, that's a very good question. I have to confirm. Has anyone done exams? Anyone know this? Do they get less time for break? That's important. Do they? I think someone said yes. Someone told me that, which shouldn't be fair. But um, I think so. Unfortunately, I think they will get less break time, but obviously more exam time. All right. But um, I have to confirm that as far as I know, yes, you all um, will start at the same time. Okay. Um, for paper two. All right. Let's see. Um, next one. So these are permitted items. Go to the list it's on the GPC website of the things. And I've got list here later on. Um, sometimes, you know, some of you might be stressed because of noise. You could, you could actually have some earplugs that could cancel any noise. So um, whatever happens when you go into the exam, you're not on your own. If there's anything that you think is going to affect your performance, please speak to your invigilators. It's so important because even if you're going to nullify your exam or if you're going to do an appeal, if you don't talk about these things and speak to an invigilator and log any things during the exam, after the exam, you won't have any case. And the GPS is going to think, you never mentioned anything. We don't know about this. And now that you failed, you're mentioning these things. So be very careful. Right? Make sure that if there's anything on the day, you saw that out in invigilator, you mentioned that. Okay. Um, next one, next slide. Let's see. We have... Um, right, so these are permitted items. So approved photographic ID, um, your approved calculators, pens and single highlighter pen, ruler. These are all things that you can have on your desk. If something's not on the permitted list, I advise you not to take it in or at least check with the invigilators if you're allowed to have it. Okay, but you need, you need minimal things on your desk as possible to prevent you from stressing with so much on your desk, okay? All right, so um, this is all on GPC website, so you can check that as well. So to ask a silly question, no question is silly. Can I use a pencil instead of ink? They're going to give you pencils, but obviously you're electronic, isn't it? It's an electronic exam. But if you have some paper and you want to do some rough work on the paper, you can have a pencil with you. Okay, is that is that is does that answer the question? I'm not sure, Uma. Can I have a pencil instead? I'm. It's an. The pen, pen is more for your rough work, isn't it? For you to write things down. Yeah, there's there's, uh, there's no pencil because it doesn't say pencil on there. It's uh, it's a pen and a single highlighter pen. That's all you can take. Okay. Yeah, so definitely. So please look at that list and only take what's on the list. All right. Um, Another thing that we had, and that's why we had a session with Rahim, is another thing that could um stop you from passing exams. Sorry, I need to change this. It says BTL testing software, but it's not BTL because that's changes surpass. Another thing we said is you have to familiarize yourself with the functionality of surpass. And I hope all of you have done that. And that's why we had a session as well, because these are sort of things that could make you fail the exam. Okay, it's not necessarily you've not learned all the clinical and the calculation stuff. It's simply because you've gone in there and you don't know how to use the system. And on the GPC website, they've actually said it on there clearly. 
that not knowing how to use the system, you cannot use this as grounds for an appeal for anything. Okay, you can't. If the system is faulty or something happens, yes. But if, for instance, you don't know how to use the system and that's the reason why you've not done well, then the GPS is not even going to take that as a valid, um, valid appeal. Okay, so um, this is one that I think they put this year, which is quite good. And it's important that you know the difference between withdrawal, nullification, and an appeal. The easiest way to think about it is that you can withdraw before the exam, right? So withdrawal is what you do before you actually sit the exam, before you've signed the consent form, okay? The online consent. So that's a withdrawal. So you can withdraw from this exam at any time before you actually sign anything on the day of the exam. A nullification is once you've already started the exam and what happens during the exam. So perhaps you're doing this exam and all of a sudden you feel ill or anything happens. Perhaps you have some technical issues. If any of these things are happening during the exam, then please, you need to mention to the invigilator, you need to log these tickets and then you can nullify the exam so that this will not be counted against you. Now, if you don't log anything and you complain about anything and you leave the exam without logging anything, then they won't be able to use that as any evidence that something happened. And as a result, you're going to either lose that. That's going to be taken as a failed attempt. Okay, so make sure that if anything happens on the day, it's logged, you're spoken to the invigilator, they're going to give you a number, make sure that you've done all the steps before you leave the exam. Then finally, an appeal is more when you've already done the exam and the results have come out and for some reason you've not done well and you've got a complaint to make. So you have the right to appeal. Okay, so just think about it, withdrawals before, nullification is during and the appeal is after the results have come out. But please, um, GPC website, very important, go through because it has a lot of information for you. Um, I've got someone that says, um, I use Surpass on the GPC website for sample questions, but there was no magnifying glass for the search option on the resource, hoping it won't be the same for the exam. So um, hopefully the exam should be fine. There shouldn't be any issues. You should be able to use all these functions. But again, Oguan um, Wane, don't worry about anything in terms of the technicality or the system because um, there will be people on there on the day to help you out and they will help you out if you have any issues. And that's very clear, especially since last June, the GPS has done a lot to make sure that you have a lot of support on the day, right? So make sure there's anything, any technical thing, any, please mention it straight away, okay? And that will not be held against you. Right, but please guys, don't keep anything. Don't think, oh my God, this is not working, but I'm still gonna carry on and do this exam even though I know my system is not working, because if it did that and something happened, you cannot use that later when against the GPHC. Okay, um, so next thing is this. I'm not going to go through all of this, but I, I'm just showing you this because this is on the GPHC website, and I think it's a very, very good algorithm for you to use. It just shows you all the different steps to follow if you want to uh, make an appeal, or if you want to not, um, nullify, or if you're going to withdraw from the exam. Okay, so please look at this. It's very important for the day of the exam. Okay, um, let's see, next slide. Okay, so um, the three key facts when it comes to your motivation, because I know all of you want to be motivated. Who needs some motivation? Type of me, type of me, type of me. Type of me, so motivation is a state of mind. We've been doing motivational training for so many years. And um, if you want to really feel motivated and if you feel anxious at the moment, then you want to hear the next things I'm gonna say on these slides. These are so important, and this is what is going to help you, and you need to remember this, okay? So the first thing you need to remember is that more students always pass this exam than fail the exam. Everything that you guys do at the moment, everything, your ideas about the exam are literally based on mock exams that you've been doing. So your ideas about the exam are based on the mock exam, and we've mentioned this in our seven-day training, that the mock exams are nothing compared to the GPHC questions. The GPHC questions are clearer, the more consistent, the more concise. Okay, the, the GPHC questions are better reviewed because there's a number of multi stages for the reviewing of the questions. GPHC questions are not ambiguous. So in terms of what you've been using all this while, it's not com compared, you cannot compare it to the GPS exam. GPS is a lot better for you compared to all of these random mocks. So and another thing you have to remember is that many students fill mocks, probably a lot more students fill mocks than pass the mock, but in the actual GPS exam itself, it's the opposite. 
more students pass the exam than fail the exam. So that should tell you something. I'll give you an example. We had students talk about, oh, they've lost a lot of motivation because they did um, a Buttercups mock or they did a Bradford mock. And I'll tell you the truth. Imagine if you did a mock that was so tough and everyone found it tough in the country, say the, the Sunderland or Bradford mock. If this was the actual GPS exam itself, the pass mark will be adjusted according to the response, according to the performance of the entire group. So some of these marks that you stress about, if even though it's not, if this was a GPC exam or situation, what you're going to feel, you're going to say to yourself, oh, I did not get 70% in a Sunderland mark or in a Bradford mark. But if this was the reality in the GPS exam and so many people struggle with this mark, the result, the, the pass mark will not be 70%, will be adjusted according to the overall performance. So there are many things about the GPS exam about the setting, about the consideration, about the marking, about the adjustments that mock papers do not do. And so they don't give you a fair, fair representation of what you can do or what your performance will be in the actual exam itself, right? So please be positive. That's why more students pass than fail the exam. Most trainees fail, not really due to the exam being difficult. So many years, we always ask students when they fail the exam, what was the reason? Why did you fail? We go through this with so many trainees. And we'll probably say probably about 95% of trainees that fail the exam, most of the time, it's not because they couldn't do the questions or it was so difficult. Many of the reasons were always around things like, I did not prepare. Maybe I had a very difficult placement. I was going through a lot of personal family issues that affected my revision. I had health issues. I did not get enough support. These are most of the reasons as opposed to the exam was so tough that it was impossible to pass. So it's important that you see the difference that you know that you have a higher chance of passing this exam than failing the exam, okay? Or let, let alone thinking about the difficulty of the exam is beyond you and so you're not gonna pass. You will pass, everyone, you will pass. So another thing I was gonna say is you don't need to answer every question correctly to pass the exam. All right, so we've seen in situations like, say, in November, say, November um, 2022, the most recent exam, the calculations pass mark was around, was about 50-something 50, 50 percent. So I think you needed to have about 23 out of 40 to pass calculations. All right, so in your actual exam, you could fill probably up to 12 clean, um, calculations questions and sometimes even more. And you still pass the exam in your clinical you could fill up to about 35 questions 34 questions and still pass clinical so please don't you have more chances of passing this exam than actually failing this exam that's the that's the that's the bottom line more chances of passing than failing so what do you need to do to pass the exam between now and tuesday someone asked a question what can we do now so georgina says this um it will shock you how straightforward it is very good. That's a very good point from Georgina. Um, the exam is way easier, Ali, way easier. It's true. And again, I will say this to you guys, and it's not even about being easy where you think, oh, this is too easy. I would say this exam is more, um, the exam is more realistic for you, right? The questions are more doable. As opposed to just easy, because you guys might think, oh, GPS is just putting easy questions. They're not but the more doable, realistic questions based on your day-to-day -day practice. And because of that, it come, it's an exam that is totally, totally doable. All right? So don't stress, people, don't stress. Okay, so um, let's continue. What have we got now? Um, what have we got here? There's a comment there. What was clinical out of curiosity, Georgina? Um, what, yeah, I think clinical was good as well. I can't remember exactly what clinical was. I need to check, check on the website what the pass mark for clinical was. But again, um, Manjo, I'll give you an example. In June last year, there were so many issues, technical issues, many problems with the exam. Many students spoke about how difficult they found the exam. They were stressed by the exam. But at the end, we still had 80, 81 or 82% pass rate at the end. Okay, so guys, I promise you, even when people say this exam is difficult and when students have a lot of challenges, the pass mark has always been still above 70% pass rate. Okay, so these are the key things that you need to do between now and the exam. 
it's really not about trying to learn new stuff and just questions, questions, questions. These are the most important things to do if you truly, truly want to pass the exam and you want to be in the best place. The first thing is you need to start reading. If you're going to read anything, you have to just revise. Go through things that you've seen before. There's absolutely no point trying to learn completely new information in the next two days or the next day and a half. Don't do it. You're better off trying to strengthen the knowledge that you've gathered already and going through your revision notes and flashcards. So flashcards, revision notes, stick to the GPHC website. It's very important in your last days to be on that website and to make sure that everything is ready for the exam. You've gone through everything on the website. Look at those questions. And then most importantly, it's your mental state. How many of you have gone into an exam at university where you did all your revision, you were ready, you went to the exam, the question came up, and for some reason you forgot the question, you went blank, and then when you came out of the exam, that's when you remember, I thought, oh my God, I can't believe I forgot that. How many of you type of me, type of me, you've gone into the exam, something you read, you knew about the stuff, you went to the exam, and for some reason, while you were in the exam hall, you went blank, or you got that question wrong. And it's only when you came out of the exam that you just couldn't believe you actually got something that you knew so well wrong. So this happens quite a lot. And the reason why this happens is because of your mental state. Because you're either not relaxed or you were stressed or you read the question too quickly. All of these things will affect the way you actually read questions. So that's why we say the most important thing two days before your exam is not reading, it's not learning new stuff. The most important thing is calming your nerves down. OK, so these are two reasons why um, you need to change. So you have to do this. And I want you guys to write this down. So if you have a pen and paper, please write these two beliefs down. These are the two beliefs that can will help anybody pass and that will stop anyone from being nervous. The only reason why you feel nervous, the only reason why you're stressed, the only reason why you feel anxious is because you're saying two things to yourself. The first thing you're saying is you don't know enough. And as a result, the second thing you're saying is, I will fail. I don't know enough. And as a result of this, I will fail. No matter how much you think about it, it comes down to these two things. The two reasons why you're stressed right now, why you feel nervous, why you feel anxious is because you're saying two things to yourself. Number one, I don't know enough. And number two, because you don't know enough, you're going to fail. The key then to becoming confident is you need to change these two things. And you have to say this to yourself every single day between now and the exam. Well, every single moment. The first thing you want to say is, I know enough to pass. Right? You don't need to know everything, but you know enough to pass. And then the second thing is, you will pass. These are the two most important beliefs that you need to have with you walking into the exam on the day of the exam. If there's any two things I'm going to really tell you to take away from here, is that when you're walking from now on, keep saying to yourself, I know enough to pass and I will pass. If the opposite comes to your mind, you need to block it out completely. Because the only reason why you're going to be nervous, why you're going to be panicking, why you're going to go blank in the exam is the moment you start saying to yourself, I don't know stuff. Then you're going to go downhill. Okay, so these are the two most important things to write down, put in your wall, put on your phone, everywhere, and keep saying this to yourself. I promise you 100%. If you decide to entertain nothing else apart from these two phrases in your head, if you choose today and say that from today to the exam, I'm only going to entertain two sentences in my head. I know enough to pass and I will pass. Regardless of what questions I see on the Telegram group, regardless of what I see people discussing, regardless of anything, even if I saw a question I cannot do right now or something that someone has mentioned I don't know, you still keep saying to yourself these two things and never change them. And I promise you, if you do that, you will smash this exam. So only things to focus on, obviously, I mentioned the GPC website for your mental preparation. Make sure you are on top of everything in terms of your calculators and all these things we've looked at. You know about your exam structure. You know about the plan for the day. You've seen some of the GPC sample questions. You've practiced on how to use SERPA system. There's also some previous feedback from previous sittings on areas that students struggle with calculators on the day of the exam make sure that you look at the things on the website that talks about the things on the day right so the guide to sitting the assessment june 2023 check the permitted items list they have a q a session for webinars but you don't even need this 
you don't need to stop learning now. And you just need to start calming down and saying positive things to yourself. Checked. Make sure all your checks on the day of assessment are fine. Your your book to travel, travel is fine. Everything is okay, right? So any issues that you have during the sitting, make sure that it's mentioned straight away to the invigilators. And the most important thing is all about flashcards. It's all about summary notes, okay? You cannot learn. You've learned enough. You know a lot more than you think you do. Another thing that has to change is all this time, you've been focusing on what you don't know. So every day you've been saying to yourself for the past nine months, well, I don't know this, I don't know this, I don't know this. Two days before the exam, you have to change this too and focus on what you know. So it doesn't matter now if you've not read chapter 14 of the BNF. If you've read chapter one and chapter two, all you have to say to yourself is, I've read chapter one and chapter two, and this will be enough to help me pass. Okay, it has to be positive. No negativity, like guys and girls, no negativity. So June exam, um, this was a June exam last year. 68% of questions were high rating, 25% for medium rating, about 5% from your low rating outcomes, the same as in the GPC framework. This was the past mark for the clinical paper. Manjo, someone was asking about last year. Well, this was the past mark for June um, last year. It was 8 over 119, and 90% of candidates achieved this. Guys, can I remind you that last year was the year in the summer where many students said they struggle with this exam. We actually went down to the GPHC and we had a protest. Many, many students were crying and they complained and they said going to fail this exam. It was a very, very, very difficult time. But despite all the challenges and everything, systems not working and all sorts that were going on, 90% of the students past the clinical paper. You have more chance than pass, passing the exam than failing the exam. Do not listen to what people say. Look at what the stats say. Don't go with your feelings. Look at what the stats, look at the figures, look exactly at what is happening every single year in June, right back as 2011. So you have a good chance and you will pass the exam. Okay, so... um. That year, um, these are the areas in June last year where students struggle with. Some of these areas we went through when we're doing our seven-day training. So red flags, when to refer, comes up every single year as an area that is challenging. Those questions that we looked at, questions like analysis type questions, prioritization type of questions, knowledge application type of questions. So these are some areas that students struggle with. But despite all of this, still a very, very high pass rate, okay? So um, so someone's asking, why did the students complain? They complain about the exam because this was the first time we're having surpass, the system wasn't working, there was technical issues, some areas started late, there were delays. But all these things, all these issues that they had in June were then rectified by the GPHC. So all the problems that they had were sorted so that those in November sat a good exam, all right? So... All those things that they worried about last year, you don't have this year. They've tested already in November. Everything has gone smoothly. So you are now the second people writing an exam after the incident. So you are in a very, very good place. Very, very good place, guys. It is all good. So um, very, very important things we're telling you right now. I'll pass it over to the one and only Uma to take over for calculation tips. Hi guys, how's everyone doing? If you guys can see and hear me, if you are ready to smash this exam, type a yes, please, yes, type a yes in the chat. Who is everyone? Say hello, say hello. Hi everyone, how are you doing today? Hi Hind, how are you? Manjot, how are you? Lisa, Lisa's put down, I wouldn't have survived without you. Thank you so, so much. But the truth is, Lisa, you're doing this all yourself because when you do the actual exam, you're going to sit in the exam yourself. I'm not going to be sat next to you and neither is Marvin. So you're doing it all yourself. So this is all from you. So you're doing really, really great. It's very easy to forget sometimes. So guys, who was on the combo course? I want to start with this. If you were on our course with our clinical and calls and our MEP and OTC, just type a one, just type a one. Because if you were, I want to mention that every year, every year we have a pass mark of over 90%. So if you on that course, then there is nine chances in 10 that you will pass the exam. Even if you weren't in the June exam, every year over 75% pass that exam. So that means over 75 of you, if you work hard, if you turn up to the exam, if you do your best, you will definitely pass the exam because the GPHC, like Marvin said, 
is not trying to make you fail. Also, what I want to highlight is another theory. So who here can drive a car? If you can drive a car, just type for me, just type for me. Just type for me if you can drive a car. I can drive a car. Marvin can drive, although he's very bad at driving. I've sat next to me. You don't want to you don't want to be shotgun with Marvin, guys. Honestly, you don't want to be shotgun with him. You'll be you'll wish you had two seatbelts and everything. So what I want to stress is that you guys can drive and you had a driving test as well, but we all feel a bit nervous before a test, and that's okay. You're supposed to feel a bit nervous, guys, because that shows that you actually care and you're worried about stuff. And sometimes that's a really, really good thing as well. So it shows that you really care, shows they're passionate, and you should use that as motivation to smash this exam. So, guys, with me, I do calculations. Who who watched my webinar on Thursday? Who watched my webinar on Thursday? If you guys watched it, uh, just type a me, just type a me, just type a me, because Thursday was filled with loads of advice for calculations. We've had the most amazing playlist on YouTube. It's how to pass the GPHC assessment step by step. So today we're on the final day. So loads of advice in there. Please definitely watch it before Tuesday because it will help you in the exam. So guys, calculations tips. All the questions carry one mark. So do the easy questions first. Another thing that we want to mention is that whoever's done the exam already, sometimes the GPHC tends to put the less difficult questions towards the end of the exam. So that's why you should do those questions first instead of trying to do the hard ones first. You should try to do the easy ones first. And Georgina put something, Georgina put that the real exam is a lot more straightforward than the mocks. And that is true. So if you want to hear my story, I did four mocks. I failed them all. I got 39 in calcs. I did it in an hour and a half. And then I actually had a nap inside the exam. And then clinical, I got 112. And I failed all my mocks. So you shouldn't think about mocks and what they do because sometimes mocks can be wrong as well. And that will just ruin your confidence because you'll know one thing and the mock question might be wrong and then you might end up learning a wrong thing entirely. So that is why... You shouldn't rely too much on mocks and you should rely on your own knowledge. Instead, whether you learn it from the courses, whether you learn from the BNF or the MEP or OTC, you should rely on your own knowledge instead. So one of the main reasons, well, six main reasons why students fail calculations is because of time. You're spending too much time doing one question when the others need doing as well. You're doing wrong decimal points. So that is the GPA. It's to tell you, they told us in the summary for November, they said that a lot of trainees got the decimal points wrong. So it's a one decimal point, but you're doing it for two. And then the units as well, you're answering to the wrong units. You're supposed to answer it in grams, but you do it in milligrams. So please make sure that you get these very simple things right. And that is because of stress and nerves as well. So You've done really well. You've worked really hard. You've been signed off. You've been on all the courses. You've done all the practice. Please do your best not to be stressed and not to be nervous because it can also lead to misreading questions. And that also is another big reason as to why trainees end up failing the exam. Wrong calculator entry is also a big one as well. How many of you try to rush your numbers in the calculator and then you get it wrong afterwards? and you put a nine instead of a six, and then you put a five instead of an eight. If that's you, type a me, type a me, type a me. So on Thursday, we mentioned that it's really important to do that really slowly. Honestly, just read the paper and enter it as you go along. So one, two, three, nice and slowly, so then you actually put the right numbers into the calculator. Because if you put it wrong in the calculator and you don't realize, you will believe what the calculator tells you. And then even though your method may be correct, you'll end up getting the answer wrong at the end of it. So please, nice and slowly. It might take a few more seconds, but it will really help you in the exam. Good stuff. Who is loving the session so far? If you want to carry on for some more tips and advice, type a me, type a me, type a me in the chat. Gant, gant, nah. Good luck, guys. You guys are good hands. I was you last year. So... Gatna passed the exam, those others passed the exams as well, and you can definitely do it too. So three minutes per question, don't take three minutes. Some questions take a lot less, some might take a little bit more. So you don't have to be three minutes per question. We covered this on Thursday. 
Go over this on Thursday too, but we'll go over it. So you have to read the whole question. You have to write down your method. Don't try to do it in your head. Easy to come back later and check your method. See, if you do a question in your head, try and you come back an hour and a half later and you haven't written anything, you'll forget because there's too much going on, guys. There is too, too much going on. Answering questions. So units, make sure they match. The formulas, most of them you're given in the exam. We went over this in the calculations course as well. Now, for me personally, I left the resource questions towards the end because they take more time. You've got to look up information. But remember that each question is worth one mark. That is very important. There's no negative marking. They're all worth the same. Like the SPC ones, you don't get two or three marks for them. So you shouldn't spend too much longer on them compared to the less difficult ones as well. So you've got five reasons, guys, if you're ready for five reasons as to why you'll, as to why you'll smash this exam. This type of five, this type of five. We've given you loads of tips and advice over the last week. But if you want five more tips and advice, type a five in the chat box, please. Nicole, Marvin in the house as well. Let's go, let's go. Rand, Ali, Lydia, fantastic. It didn't ask for rounding. Do we have to put the whole number? Yes, yes, definitely. Although it's a bit off topic, but definitely yes. So good stuff, guys. Reason one, are you ready? Are you ready for reason one? Just type a one, just type a one, just type a one. So the first reason I think Marvin's already covered this is that more students pass the exam than fail. That is true for life as well. So you get more students pass than fail. More students pass the driving test than fail. Everything as it goes, you, more of you here will pass the exam than fail. And for reason two, Again, I think Marvin's covered this briefly. So most mocks, as I mentioned in my story as well, I failed them all. And I'm here at, uh, advising you guys what to do in the exam. Most of the mocks and practice papers are harder than the actual exam. So I remember doing the Bradford mock. This was, what, seven years ago. And I think I got 20 in the maths. And then I think I got like 55 in the clinical. And I was just there like, what am I doing with my life? Like, I have to delay this exam. And if I had followed through, I would have not done the exam in June. I'd have had to wait six months. And I would have passed it later on. But I didn't believe like those mocks were like actually useful because they were very hard and they really put you off and they can really damage your confidence as well. So please don't think that mocks are real. The real exam is going to be definitely not as difficult as the real uh, as, the, as the mocks. The GPHC not trying to make you fail. They just want to see that they that you can be left alone in a pharmacy without your supervisor for the first day. Then afterwards, you have to keep on learning. You have to keep on doing CPD. You have to keep on wanting to learn. And then you become better at your job with experience as well. So that's really important. They just want to see you're good for the first day. So an example that I might use, uh, how many of you have seen an inhaler at work in the last week? If you saw an inhaler at work, whether it was a flutiform or a serotide or a symbicor or an anoroelipter, just type a me, just type a me, just type a me. If you saw any inhaler at work. So the reason why I'm saying this is because the things you see at work every day, this is what they will test you on in the exam. So the stuff you see on a day to day basis, they will test you they will definitely test you on this because they want to see that, can you be left alone? That is why they have an exam. I've now just realized a lot of trainees take time up close to the exam. I don't think I did. I kind of forgot about that. Number four, this one is very, very important. You can get a number of questions wrong, but you can still pass as well. Marvin mentioned a figure before. You can actually get even more questions wrong than that. That is because you can get up to 84 in the clinical, 84 or more in the clinical and pass, and then 28 in the calculations. But to be honest, in the last few years, the pass mark has never been 80%. It's always been a bit less. So for calculations, it was less than 60%, the pass mark. So you had to get one question in two right, and you pretty much passed that exam. And the same with clinical. I think the pass mark for clinical was 80 for, for the November exam. Again, you don't have to get a full 84. You can get a bit less and still pass that exam. So you can have 160 questions in that exam. You can get more than 50 of them wrong. And there is a very good chance that you will still pass it. 
So that's a lot of questions, guys, that you can get wrong and still pass the exam. Who feels better now that they know that they can get that many questions wrong and pass the exam? If you do, type a me, type a me, type a me. So you don't have to get everything right. If me and, exa if me and Marvin do the exam tomorrow on, on Tuesday with you, we won't get all the questions right. You don't have to get every single question right. It's okay to make mistakes as well. Definitely okay to make mistakes. So please know that you can get quite a few wrong and still smash that exam. Number five, and this is probably the most important one. Everyone believes in you. You have family, you have friends. I mean, Marvin, we believe in you as well. Your supervisor, they signed you off. If you don't pass the exam and you're not ready for it and they sign you off and it doesn't work out, they look really bad because uh, the GPC says, why are you why are you signing so-and-so trainee off or uh, why, why are you doing this when they're not passing the exam? So they obviously believe in you. They obviously believe in you. We believe in you. Even this cheeky monkey on the screen believes in you as well. You got this, guys. We believe in you, but you have to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, if you don't have that positive mindset, then that is a key reason as to why a lot of trainees are not successful in the exam. I know a lot of pharmacists that haven't really tried that hard through the training year, but they pass the exam because they believe in themselves. And then some really know their content and they can do the questions, but they are anxious and they are nervous and that's why they don't succeed. So if you believe, you have to believe first, then only then you can pass. So guys, type a response. So how would you feel if you guys pass this exam, if you guys did the exam on Tuesday and you pass the exam and you found out you passed the exam at the end of July, how would you feel guys? How would you feel? Type in the comments box, how would you feel if you smash this exam? Would you or Marvin like to sit mine? Bilal, this sounds really bad, but I've had quite a few messages asking me this already. The answer is no, my friend. The answer is no. Although Marvin's put down that if you give us your wages, we'll think about it. Marvin, how much, you ha Marvin, how much would you want? <laughs> 50K. 50K. 50K, yeah. 50K each, Marvin, then we can do. Every year. <laughs> yeah, every year the for the rest of, life. of your life. <laughs> Jay will be excited. Lydia will be super proud. Finally at peace. Lisa, Lisa, you'll be finally at peace. But the truth is one challenge finishes, another challenge will start. But that is very exciting because you're going to face a lot of challenges. And then from the challenges, you're going to come through and you're going to gain a lot of achievements. Everything is going to be amazing. A door is going to open and you will have so many opportunities. You'll be super proud. We always pray for your success. Shannon is going to have relief and Mia will feel accomplished when she smashes that exam. So final words, guys. I just want to say it's been the most amazing year with us, with Priya Shortcuts. I know so many names from here. So many of us were on our courses this year. You've stuck by us. You've really worked really, really hard. And you might not feel it, but on our groups that we have, the Telegram group, you have come so far in your revision. The questions you used to ask in at the start of your year compared to the questions you ask now and your mindset and your confidence, you have come so far in your revision. You are going to go and you're going to smash this exam on Tuesday because this is your time. This is your time. This is your moment. You've all dreamt about this for a long, long time. And it's really close by and you're going to really smash it. So if you are going to smash this exam on Tuesday, guys, you type a yes in the chat box. You type a yes. You type yes. How long after the exam do you get results? You get your results a month after you do the exam. You're going to be really great. You've worked all hard. You've worked really, really hard all year. And that hard work has to pay off, guys, because if hard work doesn't pay off, then what's the point? There's no point in hard work, guys. If you don't, if, you, if, if hard work doesn't pay off, there's no point in working hard. So you've all worked hard. So then you have to get rewarded for that. So you will be rewarded with a pass because of your hard work. Yes, Gaze, Grace. How are you, Grace? Grace is on the combo course. Grace is going to smash this exam. Lena as well. Rand, Eroms, Manjot, Mia. Yes, Ali on the course. Everyone is here. Everyone is fired up. Everyone's worked really, really hard and everyone is going to smash this exam. Good luck for the exam, guys. Not that you need it. You've worked really hard. You're all super talented and this is your time to smash the exam. 
I just want to also add that it's been the best year. We've become a bit more automated this year, but our live interaction has always been uh, as good as ever. We worked really, really hard to support you. We just want to say that this is just a part of your journey. This is not like the start and the finish. Nothing finishes when you do that exam. You're going to get even more opportunities in the future. But we're just really proud and honoured that we get to be a part of your very early career. Just don't forget us when you're big time players in pharmacy, when you're like just making the big bucks and you're like making change, just don't run away and forget us. We're always at these shows, we're at the pharmacy show, if you're always there, come say hello at the Clinical CPC Congress, come say hello then as well. So we just want to say that this is just the beginning for you. It may feel like the end, but it's just the beginning because after this, you're going to have so many opportunities to make positive and bring positive change to our profession and that is really really exciting thank you all guys it's been the most amazing year please stick around and good luck with the exam on tuesday thank you everyone uh, marvin over to you oh yeah that's it thank you all so much thank you um uma said everything to you um like the final thing i'm gonna say is like i mentioned to you guys your mindset is so important um another thing as well is the telegram groups they are good but i advise all of you that tomorrow, probably at a certain time in the evening, you want to turn your phone off totally, okay? And you want to stay away from the Telegram groups from about 8 p.m. or so, but stay away because those groups could then affect your confidence. People are asking about predictions. We always give predictions. Uma did so many of these calculations. Um, gosh, I always give loads of predictions with clinical, but um, you have to watch my videos. The same calculations has those of you on the combo course. You know those predictions. We've went, gone through them. But um, don't even worry too much about the predictions. The main thing is as long as you've done your work, you will be fine. It doesn't matter what comes up, where it comes up. At the end, they're just predictions. Okay, predictions are not the actual thing. The main thing is you should be ready for the exam. And once you're ready, it doesn't matter. You're going to all smash the exam. So, guys, that's it. Just want to say be positive. Go in there. Walk in there like the boss, all right? Don't walk in there scared of the GPC exam. Let this exam fear you, right? Don't be scared of the exam. Let the exam fear you. Like Uma said before, common things are common in the exam. The exam is not trying to give you tough questions. They're trying to give you your day-to-day -day questions. That's why many of you see GPC questions and go, oh, gosh, how could they ask this question? It's so easy. Just asking what advice do I give with, I don't know, amoxicillin. The reason is because they're not trying to look for easy questions. They're trying to look for the common things that you do every single day. And if, if giving advice on dispensing amoxicillin is something you do every day, if giving advice on how to take paracetamol tablets is something you do every day in your pharmacy, then these are GPHC questions. The questions are your common day-to-day -day activities. How many of you agree that there are same, some things that you do in your pharmacy every day that are so easy? Give me a yes, give me a yes. If there's some tasks, there's some information, there's some things you tell patients, like every single day you have to tell them. But they're like literally basic stuff. Give me a yes, give me a yes, give me a yes. Because if your answer is a yes, then this is what the GPHC would like to test you on. That these basic things, this basic advice, you know, simple starting, I don't know, whatever drugs you're doing, what advice you give people on carpool, what advice you give them on headaches, on fevers, everything, what interaction, if you're going to take coding, just the basic things that you do every single day, nothing complex. These are the kind of questions they're going to be asking you. Okay, someone comes in, chicken pox, all of us go, oh yeah, chicken pox is easy. It's easy, just give them some paracetamol, right? Some calamine lotion or something. This seems easy, but these are the sort of things the GPH is testing you on, is the common things, not the easy things, but the common things that happen every day in the pharmacy, which for most of you tend to be standard practice. So all the best, guys. Smash it. All the best. Thank you all for coming on. And we'd love to see you guys on the other side. Special shout out to Hind Abdullah in the house. Thank you, Hind, for your continual support. Always helping a lot of trainees. Guys, take care. Georgina, one love to Georgina, the legend, the lady, the boss lady. Thank you so much. And the one and only man like Umar in the house. Thank you, thank you. We hope you've enjoyed the session. We hope you've enjoyed the journey. Go out there and smash this exam. It is your time. It is your moment to feel at peace. It is your moment to be invincible. It is your moment to be accomplished. It's your moment to open all those doors in your life. Others have done it. You can do it too. See you guys later and all the best. See you, Uma. Bye, everyone. See you, Marvin. See you, everyone.